Welcome to Concept 2 Notes. We are going to be talking about dimensional analysis and scientific notation. And these are the same notes for my students, whether you are in the honors class or not. These are going to be the same. Okay, so let's talk about dimensional analysis first. This is a technique and that the purpose of it is to convert numbers into different units without changing their value. And so we've talked about this in concept one. We're going to multiply given numbers by conversion factors in order to get numbers into desired units. Okay, so again, we talked about this before, but in concept one, we kind of stayed within the same family. So we went from kilograms to milligrams or seconds to kiloseconds. Now with dimensional analysis, we're doing the same steps, but we're gonna go between different unit families. So from grams to tons or seconds to hours, we're gonna be going through different unit families, okay? But same exact steps. And again, this is useful for baking or cooking, traveling to foreign countries, building or engineering. There's a lot of ways that we're gonna practically do this. And so just a little reminder about conversion factors is their ratios of equivalent values, meaning that they equal one. And so that's the reason why we're able to use them because we can convert these numbers without changing the actual value of them. Okay, so let's do some more examples to refresh our memory because I know this can feel like a lot at first. So there are 24 hours in one day. Therefore, remember I told you this is just an abbreviation for therefore, so you don't have to write that long word. So if there are 24 hours in one day. That means that 24 hours equals one day. Okay, one day is the same as 24 hours. 24 hours is the same as one day. If I tell you that something took me one day, that's the same thing as me telling you it took me 24 hours to do it. Okay, because of this, we can write this as a fraction. And I don't want you to be afraid of fractions, okay? But we could write this as 24 hours divided by one day or one day divided by 24 hours. Both of these formats mean the same thing. And they're both useful when converting units with conversion factors. You already started using this in concept one. We're just reiterating it again in this concept because I know this is new for a lot of us. Okay, let's do another example. There are 12 inches and one foot in the imperial measurement system for length. So therefore, 12 inches equals one foot. How else could we write that? Well, think about these. We could write it as 12 inches over one foot or one foot over 12 inches. One foot divided by 12 inches, that equals one. 12 inches divided by one foot, that equals one. So these are equivalent values. They're ratios that equal one. Okay, we're gonna use these. All right, I want you to try to make one. What would be the conversion factors for days in a week? Okay, how would we write that? Well, there are seven days in one week. So seven days equals one week. How else could you write that? Seven days over one week or one week over seven days. Okay, so now let's review the steps to apply this method in a real problem. Okay, same exact steps we talked about last time. You start by writing down the given number, the starting number with the unit. That's really important. No naked numbers in this class. We got to have units. Now, the only thing I'm adding here from our notes from concept one is it's helpful to map out a little plan here. And I'm going to help you do that in the next example. All right. Then you draw a picket fence. You use a chart to fill in appropriate conversion factors, making sure your matching units are on opposite sides of the fence to cancel out. That's why it's so important that we can write these either way that we did in the last few examples because that you got to have the units opposite. Then we multiply the top line across and the bottom line across and then divide top and bottom. That's how we can do the dimensional analysis. It's how we do the conversion. Okay, so let's do an example. Remember, don't get overwhelmed by word problems. We're just going to do radar every single time. Okay, so radar, step one, read. How many minutes are in one year? Okay, now we're going to analyze. What do we know? What do we not know? Okay, we know one year. That is our given number in units. So we write that down. Okay, and then we know that we're going to be drawing a picket fence. Okay, now I told you a second kind of sub step here is to make a plan. Okay, you may not know how many minutes are in a year. I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, but here's what I do know. I do know how many days are in a year. And I know how many hours are in a day. And I know how many minutes are in an hour. So I can go from years to days, days to hours, and hours to minutes. And that's how I can figure out how many minutes are in one year. Okay, so I like to do this plan because when I write my plan out like this, this tells me how big my picket fence should be. 
Okay, so I count the arrows. I'm gonna need a conversion factor of years to days, of days to hours, and hours to minutes. That's one, two, three conversion factors. So I'm gonna need three sections here, one, two, three. Okay, so now first, let's go year to days. How many days are in a year? 365 days. And again, remember the step that you want the units to be opposite so they'll cancel out. Okay, now I'm at days. How do I get to days to hours? Well, there are 24 hours in one day. Again, I want the days to be opposite, so I'm canceling out units. So now we're left with hours. How do I get from hours to minutes? Well, one hour is 60 minutes. Now let's check. Let's make sure we did these all in the right spot. We, that cancels out my years, it cancels out my days, and it cancels out my hours. I'm left with minutes, and that's what I'm looking for. So now I'm ready to multiply across the top. What's 1 times 365 times 24 times 60? It's 525,600 minutes. And what's 1 times 1 times 1? Just 1. And then when I divide those, I get 525,600 minutes. And all my musical theater friends out there, I hope you're singing as you listen to this. So that's how many minutes are in one year. Okay? So this is what we're going to be doing. Now, I want to introduce you to, I mentioned it in the last concept, a reference sheet. If you're in my class, you are going to get this reference sheet and you will have this to refer to all year long. You don't need to memorize all these different conversion factors. I don't care if you know how many, you know, liters are in a gallon. I just care that you can use that information to do dimensional analysis. And so we're going to be using that here. Okay, so let's use the reference sheet and do another example together. Okay, so how many feet are in 411 centimeters? Okay, so step one, we write what we know with the unit. We know 411 centimeters and we know we're going to draw a picket fence. Now let's make a little plan. Look at the reference sheet and let's see what kind of conversion factors are on that sheet that relate to centimeters. Okay, there's a conversion factor from centimeters to inches, and then we could go inches to feet. Okay, so that's our plan. We're gonna need one conversion factor from centimeters to inches and another one from inches to feet. So I need one, two conversion factors, okay? So 2.54 centimeters are in one inch, and I'm writing it this way so that the centimeters are opposite and will cancel out. Now let's go inches to feet. There are 12 inches and one foot. Again, I'm writing it this way so that the inches will cancel out and I'm left with feet. So that cancels my centimeters, that cancels my inches. My only unit left is feet, which is what I'm trying to figure out. Now I multiply across the top. 411 times one times one is 411. And 2.54 times 12 is 30.48. Now I divide and I get 13.5 feet. Now you may be wondering, how do I know how to round? Honor students, we talked about this. You never want your final answer to have more significant figures than any of your starting numbers. And our starting number had one, two, three sig figs. We want our final answer to have one, two, three sig figs. That's how we knew to round to 13.5 feet there. So there are 13.5 feet and 411 centimeters. Okay, now I want you to do this on your own. I want you to practice doing some calculations and using the reference sheet. And then we're going to do even more practice together um, as a class. But for the sake of the video, now we're going to talk about the second math skill that we'll be using this year with our numbers, and that's scientific notation. Okay, so the purpose of this technique is to rewrite very large or very small numbers in a form that's just easier to use, it's easier to look at. Okay, I first showed you this when I told you about the amount of substance being a measurement of the mole. And I showed you the number for what one mole is and how big that number was. That was a crazy big number. So scientific notation is much easier to work with than that giant, giant, giant number. Okay, so all scientific notation is doing is it's taking really big and really tiny numbers and putting it in a format that's easier to read. Okay, so here's the format. It's just the digits with a decimal point after the first digit. And then it's followed by times 10 to the power, which represents how many places the decimal was moved. Okay, that sounds confusing. It's so much easier when you see it, I promise. Okay, so let's do an example. 50,500 is the same thing as 5.05 times 10 to the fourth. So our format is always the decimal point after the first digit and then how many times I had to move the decimal. So in this number 50,500, where's the decimal? Because you can't see it on here. It's technically right here. Okay, now to get it to right here, which is where we want it in scientific notation. Let's count how many times we have to move the decimal. I have to move it one, two, three, 
four times. That's where that four came from. So that's all that that number is representing is how many times we moved the decimal. Okay, but you know I've got steps for you. I got you step by step. All right, here's what you're going to do. When you get a number in what we would call standard notation, just like a normal number, and you want to put it in scientific notation, here's how you're going to do that. First, you're going to move the decimal so there's only one digit in front to the left of it. Then you're going to rewrite that number as whatever the digit is, decimal point, whatever the other numbers are you have that are significant with a times 10 after it. Then you're going to add an exponent. That's that little number up here to the 10 to represent the number of places you move the decimal. Now you need to know if the exponent needs to be positive or negative. It's a positive number if you started with a big number and it's a negative number if you started with a really tiny number, like a less than one number. Okay. Because remember, we're working with really big and really tiny numbers here. That's why we use scientific notation. All right, let's do some examples. Again, this is one of those that like it's so much easier once you just start doing it. Okay, let's convert 101,000 into scientific notation. Okay, so this number, where's the decimal? Where are we even starting? Well, it's right there. That's where it actually is, even though it's not showing. That's where it is now. And in scientific notation, that's where we want it to be. Okay, so we want it to read 1.01. .01. And then we have our times 10, and then we're going to add an exponent based on how many times we're going to have to move the decimal to get it where we want it to be. Okay? And it's 5, because look, that's how many places we're going to need to move this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's how many times we're going to need to move this. And it's positive because we started with a really big number. So that's your final answer, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth. And note, this has three sig figs, one, two, three, just like the starting number right here, look, had one, two, three sig figs, because none of these are trailing zeros are significant, only the standard zero in this. Okay, so it helps us sig figs too. All right, let's do another example. Convert 0 0.0098 into scientific notation. All right, so here's our number. That's where my decimal is now, but in scientific notation, I want it just after the first digit. So I want it to be right there. The first significant digit, okay? That's where I want it to be. So I want it to be 9.8 times 10 to however many times I'm going to move the decimal. So let's see. One, two, three. I'm going to have to move it three times to get it there. So I'm going to put a three. Three because we moved it three times. Negative because we started with a tiny number, a less than one number. So that helps me know that I started with a tiny number. So that's my final answer. All right, and similar with just starting. We started with two sig figs because none of these leading placeholder zeros are significant. We're ending with two sig figs. All right, let's do another example. Now let's go the opposite direction. Let's take a number that's in scientific notation and put it in standard notation. So 2.057 times 10 to the second power. Let's put that in standard notation. Okay, let's take it out. So here's our number. The two means that we're going to move the decimal two times. It's positive, which means we're going to make this number bigger. We're going to move it so that the number gets bigger. So we're going to move it 1, 2, and that gives me my final answer of 205.7. 205.7 is the same thing as 2.057 times 10 to the second power. And again, let's look at sig figs. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, let's do another one. Convert 3.1 times 10 to the negative 4 into standard notation. So take it out of scientific notation. All right, so the four tells me we're going to move the decimal four times. The negative tells me we're going to make this number a small number. All right, so I'm going to move it one, two, three, four. That's where the new decimal point's going to go. Okay, so what do we put here? We put a bunch of placeholder zeros. And that gives me my final answer of 0 0.0031. Again, we started with two sig figs. I ended with two sig figs. None of these placeholder zeros are significant. Okay, I really think the scientific notation helps me with sig figs because it helps me figure out how many actually are significant. All right, so I want you to practice this and then we're going to do even more practice in class and we're going to do this so much that you're going to be so familiar you're not going to be scared at all when you see numbers in scientific notation. Okay, hope this helps.